Yeah, you good? How was worship? You know, I feel badly for those of you who are, are streaming that you couldn't be in the room to hear because um, atmosphere here just, it's good. We have to figure out somehow how to get the mic also there so it's not just here because there's stuff going on. And um, this is highly uncomfortable for me, okay? It took me a long time to get over just letting the uh, replays go out there because I'd rather just do it discreetly here with you all. But here we are. And uh, so welcome, everybody, to whatever is next, right? It's kind of crazy. and uh, But I felt it important that we continue to stay connected no matter what's going on. And I wasn't going to do this in just a blank room. So I'm glad I got a few friendly faces here. And some maybe not so friendly, but no. I mean, that's why I have Tim over here. He's like, okay, you know. And Duke would have been here, but, you know, he couldn't be. Okay, Father, I thank you for the anointing that's going on here. And Lord, we just want to stay in the flow of your revelation. Ah, Lord, none of this is any surprise to you. So while the rest of us adjust, give us the grace to walk through it and to stay deeply connected heart to heart with you. We just proclaim the blood of Jesus afresh over this place, over this time, over every person that's watching this, hearing this now. We just decree and declare there can be no interference from the enemy, no religious spirits flaring up, no confusion, no technical issues. We just call in what you want to declare into the earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, we'll see how the projector goes. Last time was a little bit of lag going on, but I found this. Punch today in the face. Yeah, okay. Frankly, with so much going on, I like this because uh, we are in just an, an absolutely extraordinary time. Yeah, no question about that. But how we respond to it and how we walk through it is really, really critical in this time. And I'm seeing so much weird garbage. So this was me pulling a few things together, right? And part of this was feeling like we need to um, remember. You know, an elephant may never forget right? But then there's the rest of us, okay? Um, and scripture again and again and again says things like, remember his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, right? Why does he have to keep saying that? Because we, we just kind of forget. Yeah, we have short-term and long-term memory loss. Remember the former things long past, for I am God and there's no other. I am God and there's no one like me, mm, Okay. Jesus saying, do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000? This was real short-term memory. Okay. <laughs> they had just barely finished that up, and they're in the boat getting back, and they are just, they've forgotten. They just missed the clue. And Jesus saying then this, but these things I've spoken to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you them. These things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. So there's timing in which God releases things to us, but the challenge is we're so short-term focused, and particularly now in the culture where everything's just got to be immediate. How many times do you actually check your phone in a day? Any, any I mean, right? It, it, it's surgically attached to most of us. And it keeps drawing us away from things that we should remember. So I want to back up first just to reference we're in the which month? The 12th biblical month, Adar, right? And this was a month to see the whole board. Remember, it's deeply connected to Purim, to uh, the book of Esther and all things that goes on. And in this time, boy, there is a huge need for us to back up and get perspective. You get that, right? Because when we drill down, and part of what happens is that you get these drill downs that are suck you into a specific situation in the media, on the news report, something that you hear, and suddenly you lose that perspective. And so it's like a gambit of the enemy to get you to pay attention to one area when he's trying to do something else, right? Okay. Secondly, this is also a month I talked about. It's to wrestle to prevail. That comes out of the tribe. Which tribe is connected with this 12th month? Do you remember? Oh, eh. Okay, you guys leave. The next group can come in. <laughs> Naftali, okay? And it's, you knew that, yes. 
He has named that because Rachel says, I have wrestled and prevailed with my sister. And so we feel there's a principle in here about wrestling to prevail. Have you had to wrestle with anything this month? Okay, you just, so you see, part of what happens every time we go to first, few, first fruits and a new month, I always go back in and re-anchor that throughout the day and throughout conversations. And it just helps remind me of where I'm at. And so when I'm in situations of wrestling, then it's like, okay, it's in this month. But the critical part of that is wrestle to what? Prevail, right. It's not just, you're just not doing it in vain. There's something there. And so this was right a slide from the beginning of the, of the month before all this craziness hit, right? Do you remember just a few weeks back? You were just kind of like, la-da-da-da-da. Okay. What happened? What happened? Okay. And so there are things you wrestle, their opponents within and without. And the question is about, do we have the confidence to get the deed done? Okay. Yeah. You remember this? I'm just bringing it up now because it's all important for what we're in now. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, Ephesians 6. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. And we're, we're just watching it play out, not even in the particulars of the COVID-19 and everything, but of the fear factor. There's just, and it's stirring up things all over the place. Um, some people are, Kim was saying, I think some people are really kind of almost enjoying the break, right? That they just, and I'm like, okay, we are just not because <laughs> it's a very intense time now because the things that are out there are stirring up a lot of stuff. So we're seeing a lot of folks hit it big time and we have to be in the fight to keep going on with that but we also saw that some of the wrestling we have to do is like with god as jacob did when he wrestled with god and he was saying and the angel said let me go for the day breaks i will not let you go unless you bless me there is a wrestling with god that also is in our soul in this month and part of that is to get what we need in the perspective for this time so that we know how to do the rest of the wrestling. Does that make sense? I'm not sure? It's okay. Right? First here, always. You know, when we go in, when I minister in the prison, and that's, that's hard right now because, um, you know, we're in there every Tuesday and now we're, it's in lockdown until at least end of April, roughly. And I'm concerned about those guys. But one of the things we talk about is that we first connect here with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then because of that, we're able to connect with each other. So the wrestling first goes there. But then there's this part of it. Paul says, but I, like a champion athlete, I subdue my body and get it under my control so that after preaching the good news to others, I myself won't be disqualified. And part of the wrestling that we have to do in times like this with all that fear going on is literally physically. It's interesting, we always think that our body will follow what our mind wants to do. What we don't understand is a lot of times our body reacts to something and then our mind starts to think, okay? It's just the way it goes. So sometimes what you have to do in the midst of that is pay attention to what you're, okay, I'm feeling stressed right here and my gut's tight. And if you will just give it that attention, oftentimes it will release some of that control from your thoughts. Because otherwise, if you're stressed, you're, you're looking around for a reason. Okay, why am I so stressed? And you'll find an identified problem. It's not necessarily it, but it will be something. Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe there's something else going on. So it's a time that, like a champion athlete, we have to subdue our body and get it under control. Yeah, so that was all in this month. This makes sense now? You're like, okay. God said, okay, before we ever walked into this, heads up. You're going to walk into some stuff, so if you're ready. And I don't know, every month we do this and we just track with his calendar. I'm just amazed to watch how it, it helps me keep perspective. In part because I feel like God said, yeah, see, I told you. Right? Without him being, he not being, nah, 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 I told you. But I mean, it's like, I, come on, you know. Jesus said, I'm telling you this in advance, so when these things happen, you don't freak out. Yeah? Okay. So let's back up a little bit more because you remember when we came into the new Hebraic year of 5780, right? 
And we looked at some of those things, and the Hebrew letter for the number 80 is that letter right there, which is called what? Pay. Pay. There you go. Okay, pay. And it is literally a picture of a mouth, and we be, believe prophetically it is a time when that which is declared, that which proceeds from the mouth, the roar of the lion is really key. And it also, though, connects to words like mouth, face, lips, edge, and border. And just real quickly, there's 342 biblical words that start with that letter pay. And remember, the letters in Hebrew were pictures. So it would be like if I was trying to send you a message and every time the first picture of something was a house, you would begin to see that other words that started with that house, you would go, okay, they're connected. Hebrew does that too. And so there are words that are connected, but panim is the one of the big ones. 2,190 before, or the face, or in presence, or sight, or countenance. It's just interesting to me that we're dealing with, right now, the COVID-19, something that, that comes affects your lungs and your ability to breathe, right? It's not in the stomach. It's, it has to do with that and your respiratory system. And literally, the ability to speak comes into that. So we just kind of connect the dots. 163 uses of pathak, opening a doorway or entrance. Huge thing. There has been a great doorway and entrance that opened up into this nation for that. But there's a response, too, to intercede, to pray, to entreat, or other uses. And so this was a slide that I used at the beginning of the year, in the fall. Right? The Hebrew year. And we see that things that were spoken into and released then are starting to come into a greater acceleration. There's a, um, a video I wanna highly recommend to everybody watch. Go to Glory of Zion, and on the replay, the 7.30 service from this last week when Chuck spoke, and he brought forward a lot of the prophetic words that he received, some of them going back to 1986, in terms of China, in terms of other things going down, just to take a perspective, okay? This is not a surprise. God's been moving on things. Scripture says that God does nothing without first telling the prophets. Okay? And even recently, Chuck was giving us a heads up that it was going to be a real press through Passover. And Passover starts in on the 9th of April. Okay? So there's, there's a lot more still that we have to walk through here. But again, so we hit on the importance of the mouth and what you say and what declares. And of course, it can be yelling, it can be joyful, it can be laughter. But this whole issue in this year, we feel, is really important. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And so the concern right now, this is another slide that was from the beginning of the year. It's a verse connected to it, Psalm 141. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Say, so set a guard over my mouth. Okay, keep watch over the door of my lips. Okay. Do you think this is relevant now? There are so many words that are being brought forth and then the question is what are we internalizing and what kind of word do we traffic in oh did you hear how bad oh did you get oh did you what are, what are we what are we doing and and i think we have to be very very aware in this time because i feel like one of the things that chuck spoke to and is right it's like god pushed the pause button on us And everyone is like, wow, what's going on? And the world is watching us. Your world is watching you, right? And they're seeing how you react. How do we talk about it? How do we handle the latest news, whether it's financial or, you know, the, the outbreak of something? I mean, wh what are we doing with that? And this phrase that my dad gave me years ago, I was quite young, what you are speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. So how we respond, how we go into the shopping center, how much toilet paper you grab or don't grab, right? I mean, speaks volumes about where is the center? Why are you centered when everything else is frenetic. 
can you be that way in the face of everything else? And I think this is a time when the true body of Christ can rise up in a way and say, okay, we've got a hope that goes beyond what's here. We know who we are. But most of the time, the, the world just does not see us being really any different. If anything, maybe a little uptight and religious, but certainly not more joyful, not more free. And it's a concern because every day there is a choice here of two buttons, the pause or the panic. All right? Every moment, every time something comes in, you see your phone, the light, <gasps> okay, pause or panic. Just saw a text come in and it was another report from somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody. Da, 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 da. And this happened and this happened. And that. it's like, okay, do I really need to know that? I don't know that that's helpful. We have reduced down to 10, right, to gather here and the rest online. I really felt like we'd be fine to keep having the flight deck because normally we don't go over 50 here um, because that was the recommendation. But then when the president came on Tuesday morning and said, please don't gather more than 10, it was like, oh, crap. Because um, I feel like it's really important that we're able to come together in part because there's a lot of pressure to push the panic button and there is a choice, pause or panic each time. Whenever the bad news comes, I want you to think about hit pause. Say hit pause. Hit pause. Okay. Because there'll be a little bit, you, you won't panic, right? But there's a little bit of <gasps> right there. That, that little momentary decision when you can hit the pause. Okay. And we want to get to some practical things, but get a chance for the information to process because this is the issue, <laughs> right? And really, it's overloading in information without truth. Because the truth always is a much greater perspective of what's going on and where God is in the midst of that and what God can do in the midst of the craziness with you, with me, with all of it. But we're really kind of in an area of an infodemic. Yeah? I mean, we, they, they, they talk about a pandemic, and I get that, but there's an infodemic now because it's like, okay, that is what it is. And I'm going to show you a slide in a little bit that's going to be like, yikes. Okay, that's, how is that, how do we miss that? Because we've missed a lot of context for things which could give us a little more pause rather than going into the panic. And so, again, that's the button that wants to get up. And if you needed more, let me just give you this, just as a reminder. I shared this with you a number of years ago, back in uh, 92. Buckminster Fuller came up with a study about information and said that the totality of human knowledge, back in 1900, it took 100 years for it to double. By the end of World War II, it was doubling every 25 years. By the, it's now doubling every 12 months. That was back in 2000. It was doubling every 12 months. IBM estimated that by this time, it should be doubling about every 72 days. That's the totality of human knowledge that's out there, okay? It doesn't mean it's worth anything. And what's interesting is that the, there's other studies to show the half-life of that knowledge is increasingly short. In other words, how long it's relevant because something else comes in. But in the meanwhile, you're just bombarded information. And it is literally like a tsunami, and it's going to get here by the internet of all things, and you're already seeing it, because now your phone can talk with your front door, it could talk with your refrigerator, it can, you know, it just, it'll be doubling every 12 hours. And it is just like this massive wave of information often that's, that's just not even irrelevant, but it's bringing with us this incredible amount of change. How many of you seen change accelerate? Yeah, yeah? I mean, just... Um, and that's always fascinating because years ago, back in 2012, earlier, no, it was earlier than that, what am I saying? But anyway, God gave us that model of a carrier when it was spoken prophetically over us by Jerry about that you're not like a standard church, you're like an aircraft carrier. And what's interesting is that the carrier is designed to be mobile, it's designed to be flexible, it's designed to be deployed in harm's way, but it's built to navigate uncertainty. When you think about the oceans, right, and the ocean conditions and the instability of the ocean, it's made for the instability, which is when there's a lot of change swirling through. And there's something about that. Right now, this is a better picture of our carrier because 
most of the airplanes aren't able to land here right now. <laughs> so we're having to figure out other ways to get them remotely. And I think there's more that we can do, and, uh, but we need to stay f aware that God's given us a, a model to understand in the midst of instability, you can be stable, okay? But it means you keep moving, and it means you're f mobile and flexible. This is what we're doing here, folks. I feel badly that I did not anticipate this better, that at some point this would happen, so that I was ready more with the tech and everything. Right, that would have been helpful. But here we are, we'll catch up. Had two days to try to get this together, so. Anyway, then there's this fear factor, all that stuff coming in, coming in, coming in, and it's literally setting our heads on fire, right? Okay? So, perspective, right? Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? Renewing of your mind. How is your mind being renewed? What's renewing it? What's feeding it? What's coming in? What's your diet right now? How many flashes are you seeing about something with COVID-19 or the stock market or something else versus how many flashes are you getting about his goodness, his mercy, his graciousness, about the beauty of nature, about the amazing resilience that he has set within your heart, et cetera, et cetera, right? This is weird standing up. I don't like this. Feels, I feel like I'm a preacher suddenly. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, don't even mention that stuff. Okay. Okay. They're all laughing if you can't hear that, but that's, you're accustomed to that. Okay. So here's a question. Do you remember when you trained about fire in elementary school? What did they teach you to do with fire? Stop, drop, and roll. Thank you very much. So here you go. Here's my variation on it. Stop, drop, and roll. I know the roll is spelled differently because the roll is a roll around, right? But the idea of pause, drop to the knee and pray, but then you've got to remember your role. In a year that's connected into proclamation, what are we speaking out? What are we declaring? How are we moving in that? And are we doing the stop, drop, and roll when your hair gets on fire? Right? Which is, I mean, it's getting lit up a lot. Hello? Yeah? Okay. Philippians 4.8. I love this passion translation. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. How's that for a list? Okay. Pick whatever translation you want. But I love authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. Yeah? I mean, this, this is just, I feel like, a key thing right now. Doesn't mean we ever live in denial of what's going on, right? That's just stupidity. That's not faith. Faith is being able, like Caleb and Joshua, to go, yeah, there are giants. They're big, bad, and ugly. But, <laughs> pivot, right? No disagreement about what's been seen. Disagreement about the resources that we have to deal with it. And then this, first, this translation from New King James. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? We, we are supposed to be abounding in hope. Who wrote this? Who wrote this? Paul. That's right. Where was he at the time? In jail. In jail. Okay. And he was just going to have a great time, right? They were going to throw him a parade and... He knew, right? So he's writing to them about being filled with joy and peace and believing that hope may abound. And then this great translation from the Passion. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his superabundance until you radiate with hope. Yeah? I mean, there's some of these we need to put in our mirrors, look yourself in the face and go, okay, the world is watching. Heaven is watching. Right? 
How are, how are we navigating through this? Are we afraid? Are we timid? Are we paranoid? Are we, what are we doing? Okay. Am I going okay? You got this? Okay. Then I want to bring this into place because this actually came out of, the, out of last month because this Zechariah passage is connected to the 11th month. But I, it just feels like such an anchoring thing. I feel like God put this in place then so I could walk with it now. And it's simply this. I will be a wall of fire around her and I will be the glory in her midst. You remember that? Zechariah 2, 4. Okay. And out of that, then we came with this, that you just go the glory within the fire around, no limits. In the midst of this, the glory within, the fire around, no limits. God said that he would be a wall of protection, of fire. Okay? But the glory's got to be in here. And people see that and there's a confidence. Now, you're not stupid. I mean, you, you, but you're bold. We're bold. Because right now there's going to be a lot of people just in throes of fear. And for you to walk up and, and speak hope and life to them. See, I feel like there's an opportunity within the nation for some tenderness. There was so much focus on the politics and on the racial tensions and everything else. And right now, while there's a lot of that still going on, it's like it's all having to be kind of set. There's been a pause button a little bit on that. Can we please just now connect? And suddenly, because death becomes a reality then, and people are afraid, they become aware of, okay, now what about what's next? And there's an openness to it. I remember C.S. Lewis in the Screw Tape Letters. How many of you read that? Okay. One under devil, you know, counseling another about how to get to his client who's now a Christian. And the one under devil's all excited because war is broken out. And the other one rebukes him, says, You're an idiot. When everything is just going easy, then they're easy prey for us. They just kind of slowly sleep into death, and we got them. He says when they're at war, they know they're mortal. And because of that, they are praying to our enemy, which was God, and he's hearing them. So you, he, this guy's telling the one devil to the other, don't delight in the people who are going to be killed. There are many more that we're losing to our enemy because they're aware of that possibility. So it's just an interesting thing in the midst of it. So we don't rejoice in what's going on, but we understand our God can move in wild ways in the midst of that, okay? But he's deployed us to be in these places. And then because of that, then, that there are no limits to what he wants to do. The glory within, the fire around, no limits, okay? It's an easy affirmation. The no limits comes from the first verse there where he says Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of all that's going to be added to it. No limits on it. And so we believe because we've been grafted into all the promises, we can lay hold of that as part of it. You get on that? So let me just give you a little bit of, some of you have talked about this because it just, I think we just don't have perspective. And maybe people have talked about this, but I'm, I haven't seen it. So I want to give you some things that are a little bit alarming. But in the 1718 season, flu season, the influenza, 45 million illnesses, almost a million hospitalizations, 61,000 deaths. That's in this country alone. So more people died in that one year than in the entire Vietnam War. Okay? Just, just to give you a comparative point, okay? And it's like, any of you remember freaking out in 1718? Okay, no. And, and so what's interesting is like it's, it's not trying to lessen the significance of the COVID-19, but it, it's going, we, we got to get a perspective. There was a, a funny thing in, um, there was a show called The West Wing, and one of the assistants gets hold of a fax from NASA warning about this satellite that's falling to Earth. It's like the size of a school bus. It's like a Chinese satellite. And so this one assistant is just going, doesn't anybody care about this and stuff? And so she's running around trying to get attention. Well, the people in the know are just, they, they're not saying anything. Oh, yeah, you better look at that. But, but they're going, she doesn't know that there's like 12 of these things fall every week. There's so much stuff up in the air. It happens all the time. And so nobody's alarmed about it. But she's alarmed because suddenly it came to her desk. It's the same thing. There's a lot of it that goes on all the time, but suddenly it's not there. 
So it's not to make light, but it's to give it context. So let's go back just to last year, 35 million, a half million hospitalized, estimated 34,000 deaths last year. Now let me show you this year, 2019, so far, this is going through March 7th, 36 to 51 million people. Okay, so set all the COVID stuff aside. This is the influenza. This is the normal thing. Somewhere between 400 and, and 670,000 hospitalizations and already between 22 and 55,000 deaths in this nation. I mean, so again, it, it's, it's not to make light of it, but sometimes we, we got to get perspective. We got to get perspective. We have been through things like this before on an ongoing basis, and we will go through this. Okay? It's not without precedent. It's a different kind of the threat, so we have to ramp up the precautions. But there's got to be a, okay, part of the old issue of being a carrier is that we were designed for warfare situations. Okay? We're not a cruise ship. Okay? We're not a cruise ship. We're not here to make you fat and happy. Do you do that on your own? I do that on my own, right? But we are here to equip you for the fight and for what's there because that's where it needs to happen. And the fight is about bringing encouragement, and bringing life and bringing light where there's so much craziness going on. This track so far? Okay. So not panic, but a chance to pause because when I give this to you, I debated about whether to even bring this up. I think it's some people are going to think this is morose, but I had not heard this out there. It just, I just... The reason I came to know it was several years ago, Kim mentioned about over 50,000 deaths to the flu. And I went, well, you're crazy. That would be in all the press. It would be headline news. There'd be all this thing to you nuts, you know. I looked it up. She was right. And I was flabbergasted. How can that happen? Because you know how much trauma Vietnam caused. And that was some, a little bit over 50,000. And it's like, wow, okay, we just, and that happened just a couple of years ago. Okay, so some recommendations about hitting the pause button. This one actually came because there's a new book by John Eldridge called Re Getting Your Life Back. And in it, he's got a chapter called The One Minute Pause. There's a free app that you can download called The One Minute Pause Ransomed Heart. No charge, no ads, but literally you can schedule it it will come up on your phone, it will ping, and it will just give you a chance to take a minute break and you'll just hear some music and John just speaking over, Jesus, I give over to you everything and everyone. I give it back to you. It's just, it's a discipline. And then you can go to five minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes if you want, okay? So we're gonna put a link in the, in the replay information so you can find that. So one good thing. So figure out how, I just changed the words in this, pause, pray, proclaim, but I want to cover some other things here. So what to do, what to do. Is it crazy out there? Okay, it is crazy. And can you feel the crazy trying to get in here? Okay. And what's hard is because sometimes there are fellow believers who are transmitting it. Okay. Have to be careful what we're trafficking in. So let me give some recommendations with slides. Go on a diet. How many of you here need to go on a diet? Okay. We all need to go on this diet. And what I'm talking about is your, limit your media intake. Very practical, okay? You literally have to become disciplined right now. How often are you looking at the phone, looking at the computer, dialing into Facebook or something like this? The pressure can just be enormous. Find a way. Okay, you're gonna have to have times. So we've gotta give each other a break on text reply time. What the heck's going on? I sent Tim that text five minutes ago. <laughs> and Kay, Kay, I sent that to her last night. Why wasn't it, okay, yada, yada, yada. Because we do have a lot of text connections, right? Because we're a warfare unit. So we really do cover each other in prayer when there's things going down. And that's very helpful. But we gotta, we got to somehow, whew, some of the frenetic part, watch your texts, Facebook, and emails, both the content and the volume. 
before you forward that thing, before you send this out, before you give somebody else the bad news, <laughs> think about it. Give it context. Jesus said, I've told you about this in advance, so when it happens, okay, you'll be strengthened. Number two, Kim hates this slide, get perspective. So I'm gonna go real quickly. What I'm saying is you gotta get to the higher elevation. Okay, Kim, I've changed the slide. So here you go. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm, for we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Everybody go, I've been co-seated with Christ. Okay, so you got to see things, go see things from up there, right? Because in the midst of this is more like see the whole board, but it's even bigger. You're like, you're seeing all of it about. And in the midst of it, there's a lot of temptation that will drag us down into the gutter, okay? Into the sewer, into the morass. So perspective, get perspective. Number three, watch your mouth. Say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Okay. We're going to have a bar of soap in the back, some of you, before you leave. Okay, specifically, what information are you trafficking in? And does it, what does it foster in others? Okay. You just got to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Speak life. That's our directive. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Say speak life. Speak life. So we have to find ways to do that with each other. Okay. You get on all this? This is making sense? Just practical stuff. Take the one minute pause. You can't go the whole day on breakfast only. You can't go the whole day on your quiet time in the morning only anymore. Just trying to tell you. There may was a point in time where things were regular enough and you, you got that time, you got your dose, you were good. Uh-uh, ain't happening anymore. We gotta be dialing in throughout the day. You gotta find ways. Use the one minute pause, use other things. Just to take that break, there's more frequent recalibration is critical. We've gotta keep getting that in, yeah? Okay, next, feed your soul. Say, feed your soul. Get out with your God, okay? Do most of you get fed when you're out in nature? Okay. There's something about it. And you know what? For some of you who are just freaked out or the mosquitoes can't, then all I want you to do is on your computer or on your TV or whatever, bring up some of the images that are just breathtakingly beautiful of nature, right? Just, and just put yourself in that in a one-minute pause one of the things that happens for me when I'm getting images uh, for presenting here is I'll run into some stunning photography of nature and stuff. And a lot of times I can't use them, but I, I just put them in a saved folder. Because they're just like, <gasps> you're right? They just, they just catch you up. And we need that. That's part of feeding your soul. We all need beauty. Beauty is necessary. And there's a lot of ugly going on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot of ugly going on. So let, let's figure out ways to do that. It'll keep us going. Here's the next one. Seek out laughter. Say, seek out laughter. Okay, we got to do it. It says that God laughs at his enemies. Okay, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Okay, laughter starts in him. And if you have to, force yourself. I'm serious. Force yourself. You guys just force yourself to laugh sometimes. Watch something. Last night, Kim and I were winding up the day. You know what we were watching? Despicable Me 3. We're watching the minions because the minions are just a kick in the butt. It's like, you know what? This is what I need. It's just something with a little bit of, you know, I am not in denial. I know what's happening out there, okay? We're setting this whole crazy thing up. I'm dealing with the reality, but I've got to find ways to laugh, okay? Find people that make you laugh. Tim sends me really funny, quirky stuff usually. And just sometimes I just need to laugh. I just need to bust up, okay? Good on this so far? Practical, okay. Next, consume more worship music. Whatever you've been listening to before, I wanna encourage you, we need more of it. We need more of it. Two things, find the new tombs. You need new, behold, you know, I sing unto you a new song. I always am trying to constantly introduce new music in here all the time. Kim sometimes says, but I just got used to the old ones. 
Okay. And I appreciate that, but I've got, we got to break it up and you got to have stuff that gets into you. Right. I love it. You know, ain't no grave going to hold my body down, man. You ought to hear that in the prison. It's just, it's just, it's really, it's just amazing. It's boom. Okay. And also though, play the old ones that still move you, you know, singing holy, holy, holy tonight, right? So much power in those hymns when they're sung from the heart. So, but saturate, we, we need to be saturating ourselves with that. Have communion daily. Just fine, you know, if, if you have to, you know, your genie, you don't have a communion cup, so you're going to use a shot glass. You've got plenty of those laying around. You got the bread, you got saltines, right? Okay. You know, you don't have the grape juice, use the wine. Use the, you know, get, get creative, but it's important that we set all of our burdens on him on a regular basis. On a regular basis. This is an extraordinary time. It's time for us to go back to some of the things the early church. Every time the church gathered, which just so we're clear, was literally every day because their livelihood and their lives depended on it. They gathered up every day in small groups in homes and they broke bread and they celebrated the Lord's Supper. Okay? And that wasn't a religious thing. It's just because they, they were a community. Okay? And that's that. there's things that in the midst of this we've got to attend to. And then the reminder that he is your healer, right? He is the Lord who heals us. And so in the midst of all the craziness and the fear of that, we know who our healer is. We know who our redeemer is. We have a hope that is greater. You got it on this so far? Makes sense? Okay, and then this one, stay connected. One of the biggest concerns I see with this is the level of isolation. And if you want to get fearful, you spend too much time alone. Hello. Okay. It can just now, and I can tell you this from experience because at one point I had formed a company with Jerry up, uh, up in Alexandria, Virginia, and we were working on a project um, and I was responsible for doing risk assessment, which means I had to write out disaster scenarios of what could go wrong in this production thing. Okay, I mean, extensive things about all the things if this happened and that happened, then this would blow up and it would incinerate this and go on and on and on, right? This was new technology. And let me tell you, the problem was I did that alone. And after about a week, I was completely freaked out. Okay, I did not, and when we told the guy, we had a consultant from the NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board. He says, you're never supposed to do that alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you tell me. You know, you're supposed to write that and then you would meet together and you decide what is too, too high a cost or too low a probability and you, you got over that. So when we're alone, we've got to stay connected in the midst of this, okay? And I've got these two being outside, you know? If, it's, if the restaurants aren't working, then find a place somewhere else. In the home. Do something. But here's the, the, react, the reality. We have to be intentional about it. If we're not intentional and if we don't schedule it, it won't happen. It's, oh, let's do lunch sometime, is the old thing, right? That was the old Hollywood blow-off. You want to blow somebody off, oh, let's do lunch sometime. Or, yeah, have your peeps talk to mine. Yeah, okay. It's just an industry thing, right? The lower ones are going to work out the schedule. So you have to initiate, you have to be intentional, set a place and time, and go from there. We are not to move in fear. We are not to move in fear. Well, I just heard that, okay, well, well, wait. Prudence, yes, but let's be creative about when and where you meet, okay? Find ways to do it. It may be having somebody over to watch a movie because you can't go to the theater. You have lunch at the park. You have lunch in your house. Do, do something. Go for a walk. Stay tuned in the spirit. I mean, we get to a point if we're keeping six feet from everybody, okay? And I understand prudence, but I love the fact that Jesus would walk up to a leper and touch him. Wait, well, wait a minute. Jesus, that's just like, 
That's irresponsible. You could get leprosy and then pass it on to the next person you touch. Okay, well, I think he was being directed by the Holy Spirit, right? He wasn't being reckless, but was being intentional and focused. And I think in this time, you're gonna, we're going to see a lot of people who look haggard because they are alone, they're isolated, they're living in a lot of fear. And you have the good news, right? The full armor of God. You have the belt of truth about who you are in God, who he is in you. You have on the breastplate of the rightness and the righteousness of Jesus protects your heart, your spirit, and your feet have the readiness of the good news of the reconciliation of all things. The helmet of salvation protects your thoughts, protects your eye gates and your ear gates. Lord willing, it will also help guard what you say. <laughs> okay? Shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the utterance. It's the rhema of God, the rhema theos that which God has uttered in which I come into agreement and utter with him. So, yes, we're prudent, but you have to first and foremost be obedient, right? You put prudence over obedience, you got a bigger problem than getting infected. You understand? Because if God's told you to do it and you don't, the consequences, yeah, okay. And then remember just this threefold thing, the glory within, the fire around, and no limits. I think it's just an easy thing to remember. And when you, you know, we had this, the guys in the prison doing this, hand on their heart, the glory within, the fire around, no limits. You need to do that as we move into a world that's increasingly right now paranoid. You got to understand, okay, I'm prudent, but guess what? It's the, he's the fire around me. He's the protection. Because of that, there's no limits to what he may have me do. I don't know what that is today. Because, again, the world's watching, and the question is if we will go around like this or we go around like this. Whether our head's on fire or whether our heart's on fire, right? Whether it's the world, because we're not supposed to be in fear, but we are supposed to carry the fire within we're not supposed to be conformed, but we're supposed to be transformed. So, punch today in the face. Say, punch today in the face. Do you, you get the, the sort of an aggressive stance in there as a believer? Because rather than sitting there and being buffeted by all this stuff, yeah, I'm going after it. It is an extraordinary time to serve the extraordinary God. Okay. Chuck's word on Sunday morning is about there is a huge opportunity for God to move and harvest in this time. Because when people's normals, routines get broken up, they have to start asking questions, the deeper questions, which we can ignore when everything's going great. Okay? So we don't have to traffic in fear, and we should never be doing that. You know what? You know, that is just not it. But is there mercy to be extended? We're in a mercy season, which means it's one-on-one -on -one connection that's really going to make it work. It's going to be the body being mobilized and going forward. So, pause or panic. It makes a statement. What you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you say. So as we move, though, and we have the countenance and the posture of someone who's at peace in the Lord, now people go, okay, there's something in you. I'm willing to hear that. You don't look like you're out there just trying to get a convert. You're, you're, you're moving differently, right? I love the fact that people tore the roofs off of buildings to get to Jesus. Wow. Okay. So, Father, I just ask now, whatever was profitable out of this will go deep Help us to be practical about this time, Father, and really keep perspective to see the whole board, to wrestle, to prevail, Father, that there's, there's more for us to do, more for us to speak. And Lord, help us hit the pause button, fall to our knees, and then remember our role. And Lord, whatever this is supposed to do, whatever this new kind of getting together is supposed to do, help us learn how to do it and do it well. Because we're not to neglect to meet together in this time. 
So, Father, we call up the small groups that need to be meeting now. And, yeah, if it's 10 max, okay. But there are homes around where that needs to happen that are refuges that other people are getting called into, not out of fear, but out of encouragement because we need each other to speak life and to call it up. So we seal this and say it can't be thwarted, distorted, or ripped away from any of us by the enemy. But that which is of your word will bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah? That makes sense? Okay. So, um, yeah, how this is all going to work and how long this is going to go on. Um, it may even be that we're supposed to keep doing some of these, but maybe there are other households where you gather up with 10. And you put this on the screen and then you watch it there so that you're talking about it and getting encouraged. It doesn't matter. We don't have, we are not here. One of the things I, I love about our model is if we are not about control. We're not like we've got the corner on the truth. If you miss this, you've missed it. No, we're, <laughs> you know, we're here for those who need to fly and get what they need to get refreshed and then fly out and be on your assignment. So we're going to be flexible with whatever needs to happen with that, right? I want to do one last thing. Lord, I just break off any other spirit of fear that might try to go out with anything that I said. In Jesus' name, any spirit of recklessness is not about being reckless, but it is about being bold, and it is about being faithful, and it is about not fearing man, not fearing illness, only revering and fearing you. Amen.